This is Dateline Wyoming, produced in the studios of Wyo Radio. Dateline Wyoming is a weekly news feature highlighting community issues and events that shape our lives here in southwest Wyoming. In-depth analysis and interviews with the people behind the headlines. Presented Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of Wyo Radio ownership, management, or those of our sponsors. Time will be made available for responsible dissenting opinion. And now, Dateline Wyoming. This is Tom Ellis, your host for Dateline Wyoming. Our in-studio guest this morning is Sweetwater County Commissioner John Kolb. Thank you for having me on. We are also joined by Wyo Radio News Director Tracy Perkins. Our topic this morning is the continuing controversy between Memorial Hospital of Sweetwater County and the Sweetwater County Commission. Are you speaking for yourself as a county commissioner or are you speaking for the county commission? It's going to vary. And in some cases, I'll speak for myself if we haven't already talked about it. And if the commission has already come out with a positional statement in the past, I'll speak to it as the commission. I'll be real clear about if it's, if it's me as an individual county commissioner or the board of county commissioners. Explain, if you will, just what the overall purpose and responsibility is of the Sweetwater County Commission. It is a very broad job. It involves financially, fiduciary responsibilities, Board of County Commissioners budgets for many county entities that you're probably familiar with, the uh, libraries, rec center, sheriff, jail, that, and that the sheriff jail to $10 million just uh, in those two. Libraries, very large budget, events complex. Uh, there are what's called component units, and that's a, an accounting term. And the hospital is called a business unit, yet, yet again an accounting term. What's in common with these type of entities is uh, the ownership of the facilities. They are owned by the Board of County Commissioners, whomever that is, the time. And that's done because we're voted by the people of this county to represent those assets. Ownership of assets is one large thing the Board of County Commissioners has. Setting budgets, we set the mill levy. When you look at the mill levy on your tax bill that you receive from Rob Slaughter, we actually officially set those mill levies. The Board of County Commissioners doesn't handle the school's uh, revenue, but we set the mill levy. So what we do is make sure the mill levies are correct per statute. Do they exceed the amount, the maximum being able to be levied or not? So they're all reviewed and we set them. The commission is an amazingly broad job, which little is known about. I get that question asked a lot, go door to door. What does a county commissioner do? And uh, it's a very big question. It, it covers board appointments that run those assets, like the Board of Trustees of Memorial Hospital County, the, the, the fair board. Uh, we appoint all those board members. Uh, there's some joint cooperative boards, like joint powers boards, that we appoint certain folks on those boards. But generally speaking, the ones that are totally under the county authority are appointed by the Board of County Commissioners. Well, and that, and that relationship is uh, continues. You know, I, we it doesn't go back to micromanagement, but it, but it comes back to uh, those people charged with managing the facilities, and they do the day-to-day -day things. Larger things, they typically have some communication with the liaisons in our case. So we liaison to different groups, and that allows the commission to do more things at once. So one of us might run off to the, I do the planning and zoning. And so I listen to what goes on there, and I report back to my co-commissioners about what I had heard. Other folks might go to the library board, and they report back to the board about what they've heard. So it allows us to split the duty load up and uh, be in more places at once and not have a quorum. The, the rules about how we would have a quorum are, you know, preclude you from showing up to a place without an advertised meeting when there's three or more of us there and conducting business. There's a few more qualifiers to it. but So we just show up by either one or two of us. So the board sets the county budget. And the county budget is an umbrella that encompasses all those more, many more things that I didn't mention, but many entities. And it's about $196 million in total. And $90 million of that, incidentally, is the County Memorial Hospital. And that doesn't mean that we constructed their budget, but we have to approve their budget as per statutes and accounting rules. So we do have the broadest authority. The governor often says that a county commissioner is more powerful than the governor. I disagree with him because we don't have a, a jet to fly around with, but uh, the governor says that. And it's because the, the job is so broad. We cover roads, bridges, 
just about every part that touches your life out there that uh, we're involved with, interaction with the BLM, federal lands management issues, all things that a lot of people care a lot about in our county, minerals extraction issues, trying to you know keep multiple use going, the, all those kind of things are in the realm of a county commissioner. It's a job where you're constantly, honestly learning more every time a new subject comes up because nobody I'm aware of can memorize tens of thousands of pages of statutes and understand them all. I think we all try to do the best we can do and uh, th that's how we've been conducting ourselves. Would it be fair to say that in a nutshell, the commission is responsible for oversight and implementation? Fiduciary oversight and implementation, primarily. So you gave us somewhat broad strokes as to what the county commissioners do. Specifically when looking at the hospital, what kind of responsibility does the county commission have towards the hospital and their board? Oh, we appoint the board members. We set the board. Uh, we can, it can either be as little as five people or as many as 11. It has to be odd numbers. We have the uh, authority to uh, remove board members. Uh, we appoint board members. Uh, it's, it's, when it comes to board members, that's under 188104. And then the other authorities that I had previously mentioned are in statute. All those particular statutes that say shall have the approval and consent of the Board of County Commissioners must be complied with. And there's, I don't know, five, six of them. That applies to uh, seven pages, roughly, of, uh, of county memorial statutes. And there's differences. You know, there's hospital districts. There's county memorial hospitals. There's differences in these. And we have a county memorial hospital. I think there's only six in the state of Wyoming. Obviously, if there's only six in the state, most counties don't have a county memorial hospital. Uh, you know, what, what, what was the purpose of the county memorial hospital? And, and I would, you know, basically paraphrase statutes and say it was to provide services at a reasonable cost and to take care of indigent patients within our county. And I'll repeat that. It's within our county, indigent patients. That isn't 150% of the poverty level. Those are folks with no ability to pay. That's what statutorily is said. Now, do those statutes need to be worked on? I, I would say yes, because what is it in the, in the, in the year 2016? These were written in the, you know, the early part of the 1900s, uh, and, and so that, that needs to be addressed. It's entirely compliant with state statutes. That's just what, where the beginning and end of this is. And the state statutes are mandatory. They're not optional. I just want to make everyone clear of that. The, the hospital's dealings of what they've done, I personally think, have generally been good. Pr been able to provide more services for the people of this county, which is always good. But we have to always do that while keeping the prices of the services affordable. And, and therein lies the key of this. We're not New York City and we're not San Francisco, but we are at the beginning of a regional healthcare facility. But we can't be all things to all people. I think the goal here is to provide cost, reasonable cost services and uh, take care of the indigent. That, that is primarily the responsibility charged with the Memorial Hospital. Not what their bylaws say, but what statutes say. And I think uh, you know everybody has that intention so it has to just be done correctly and properly because it protects everybody. Everybody knows if you have a contract that isn't signed, it's not worth anything. It was never an agreement. So this is kind of where I'm coming from is they just have to be properly executed. I, I think for the most part, I think we're doing a, a good job up at the kind of Memorial Hospital. Talk just a little bit about the history behind the relationship between Sweetwater County Memorial Hospital and the Sweetwater County Commission, if you will. You know, we had, a, I think, a, a fairly good relationship uh, when I first took office. Jerry Klein, the CEO, I think it was cordial. Things were amenable at that time. You know, there wasn't any controversy. Then as time went by, the hospital board uh, wished to uh, construct an ambulatory surgery center. Well, let me take it back up one more step. They had a medical office building, and the Board of County Commissioners supported that to go on the ballot, and the uh, Sweetwater County voters supported that ballot initiative to build the medical office building, which was a, a very nice addition to the complex that allowed them to provide a lot of other services with other physicians. After that, they wished to construct an ambulatory surgery center. After careful analyzation of the uh, project, it was found out to be a $50 million cost, and it seemed at the time the best thing to do was put it before the voters so the hospital wouldn't bear the cost of that facility. Now, I'll be clear about the ambulatory surgery center. It's really 25% an ambulatory surgery center, 75% an office building with a helipad on top of it. So I think to call it an ambulatory surgery center is, uh, I would say, disingenuous. 
I think it's mostly an office building with an ambulatory surgery center in it. And it, w- it does have benefits, cost benefits, uh, but the uh, economy and, uh, you know, the other factors of, of the cost and the, and the debt load that the hospital would also incur was so high that the Board of County Commissioners declined to uh, move forward with the uh, revenue bonds that were needed to construct the project, and the project didn't happen. Now, from that point forward, I, th- I think there's been some animosity because, uh, quite frankly, the board members, the board of trustees couldn't understand why we wouldn't support that. They were shocked. And uh, we had a, we had a, a failure to communicate. But some of those issues from that point forward have gotten us to where we're, to, where we're at today. Now, quite frankly, uh, the statutes were looked into to see what, just what the relationship is. And so maybe there's something statutory that needed to be changed. But to, to start the change, you have to understand the statutes. So after analyzing the statutes, it was discovered that many things weren't being complied with. And after reviewing it further, our county attorney reviewing it, we come to the understanding that many, many statutes have not been complied with over the years. And it's been historical. The present board members have not been party to the history. They didn't start the history, but they certainly are still doing what they've done historically. And therein lies the issue, the difference of opinion between what statutes read and what they've been doing traditionally at the hospital board. So you mentioned the statutes and how they have been violated in some way. What are these statutes and then who has the power over the the hospital to make these decisions? Statutes are, number one, written by the House, Senate, and signed by the governor, but they're legislatively done in Cheyenne. County commissioners have zero authority to change, modify, or go against state statutes. You know, we can, of course, lobby them to change things, but we don't have that authority. We're not like a town. Uh, we can't make, uh, you know, ordinances. We can only follow statutes. And when statutes declare certain things as shall, that means you need to do it. Uh, it's not an option. It's not a maybe. It's a shall. And in many, many cases, uh, statutes uh, have not been followed because of interpretation with with the statutes. Now, I'll frame it up by saying this, is that a, a statement statutorily made in a broad sense does not trump a specific statute. So a kind of memorial board of, of trustees runs under authority, generally under 188104, and that gives them broad authority to conduct business. And they need that authority to conduct business because legally they have to have it in statute. Now, there's preceding statutes that talk about reporting, 107, management in 108, and those are all under 18.8 if someone wants to look them up, and also under 301, and there's, there's a few others, but let's talk about the major ones. They specifically talk about what's required, and the requirements, quite frankly, have not been met. 104 does not give you the authority to do anything you want to do, and the authority of that board comes from the authority of the Board of County Commissioners who are elected. So the only connection to those trustee members are the elected Board of County Commissioners. That's been, I think, forgotten. It needs to be uh, put back on the tracks again and get the thing going in the right direction. So what are some of the things that the county commissioners and their attorney, Daniel R. Mosby, have looked at and considered as maybe in violation? I'll just go down the list from our county attorney. It starts off, Wyoming Statute 188104C states that the hospital shall be erected and maintained on lands whose title is in the county or upon which the county has a lease for the terms of 99 years. What that means is the women's clinic. Uh, if you conduct uh, hospital business on that, on that premises, it cannot be titled in the hospital's name. It cannot. Uh, that's one. <clears throat> we might mention you are reading from a letter from... Danny Aramos, the, a county attorney. A county attorney. It goes on about 188105. They may receive donations for real estate, money, or their property. However, that doesn't give you the authority to conduct hospital business on that property without transferring the assets, the property, into the county's name. Then under 188108, uh, and this is about hospital operations, and it says whenever the Board of Trustees of a County Memorial Hospital or Special Hospital District deems it, in the best interest of the county, they may, with the approval and consent of the Board of County Commissioners, lease or enter into a contract of operation with the hospital with any person, group, association, or corporation. Danny R. Mosby states that Jerry Klein is Chief Executive Officer of Morrow Hospital of Sweetwater County, and according to his contract, he is indeed functioning as uh, management of the hospital. What that means in layman's terms is the contract has to be approved by the Board of County Commissioners for management. And why would that be? It's because that the original authority for management with the hospital was given to the Board of Trustees. 
And if the board of trustees wants to change that arrangement because they feel it's in the best interest of the hospital, they approach the people that appointed them, and the people that appointed them will change their duties and then give away their duties and agree to it to, say, a CEO. That's how it was structurally set up in the beginning. So if you want to change the arrangement, you have to ask the people that appointed you. That's, it's, it's simple. It's not micromanagement. It's management as per state statutes. And that once again, we didn't make these state statutes, we, but we have to follow them because it says you shall. And then we have a Wyoming state statute, 18.8.301. Now this deals with, uh, it's, I'll quote here, uh, states a county memorial hospital may engage in, sh- in shared services and cooperative ventures, enter into partnerships, either alone or in conjunction with any entity, uh, to form an interest owner of corporation partnership, limited partnership, uh, cooperative registered limited liability, part, and it goes on with a couple different combinations. But it goes it goes on this particular statute, and it states that these additional powers granted to the hospital shall only be exercised with the approval and consent of the Board of County Commissioners, as per 18.8.301 CIIA. It's been noted that there's been many agreements made, uh, and I will state that in 2012, Memorial Hospital came in front of the Board of County Commissioners under this particular statute and asked for our approval for an agreement with Castle Rock District in Green River for a cooperative ventures for services, which was appropriate. Now, it was appropriate in 2012, but I guess it's not appropriate anymore. Well, that's that's a, an issue of contention, and that needs to be rectified and done properly. Now, this particular one, let's talk about a, you know associations. It's not to say that I particularly would be against any of these things, but in particular, I am charged with following statutes, and they state that it shall be done this way. It's not an option. It states it shall. So uh, I'm not in disagreement of uh, providing better services for the residents of this county. I think I'll state it emphatically that the Board of County Commissioners wants the best hospital that we can have for the county, but it has to be done properly and statutorily. Next, this is a, a fairly clear one, 18.8107. The Board of Trustees shall keep a careful record of all recordings and keep duplicate vouchers of all expenditures, uh, with one set filed with the Board of County Commissioners in its June session. It further states, the Board of Trustees shall annually report at the June session meeting of the Board of County Commissioners all important transactions for the previous 12 months, specifying in the report uh, the money received from the County Memorial Hospital Fund, all monies, properties received from other sources, and the use and deposition of such monies and other property as such other facts as they may deem of public interest or the Board of County Commissioners may require. They have never, never done this. In the entire time I've been a commissioner, I never found a point in the past where they've come in and, and, and done this. So this clearly, it's a shall, and it has not been complied with. And it's rather easy. This goes to, the, I think, the main point here, cooperation. Our appointed board of trustees need to cooperate with the board of county commissioners. And that isn't micromanaging the board of trustees or the hospital. It is merely a relationship that connects the voters to those trustees, to the hospital asset. Without that connection, the voters have no representation. And I think therein lies the biggest problem for me. You folks out there that own the County Memorial Hospital voted for us as your, as your county commissioners to manage these assets. And uh, we're not doing very well in trying to do this with our appointed board members. And, that, and that's an issue, and we're trying to resolve it. You mentioned the voters and how they can play a role in this. So what exactly is the role between a voter and then when it goes to the hospital board, how do they have any say in who's in the hospital board or what happens? Well, that's a good question. Um, Obviously, it comes from the Board of County Commissioners. Um, The the, the voters, uh, our constituents, uh, would talk to a commissioner and the commission would make a decision. There is the disconnect. We have appointed board members who do not have a tie to the voters, and and that is a big problem. Their their connection is us, and without us, there is no connection. So it's a a symbiotic relationship between all of us, and uh, we don't have that right now. And it's a problem because where do the voters have a voice? Well, you know, they have a voice when they don't elect us or they support us as a board, as a commissioner, because they don't like or like the way things are going at, say, the hospital. Or it could be many things. We're over many, many, many types of operations within this county. 
uh, the sheriff, the, the treasurer, the, you know, the, we do the budgets for libraries, rec center. Uh, almost every part of this county is touched by the Board of County Commissioners in a uh, financial way typically a financial way. We don't micromanage those boards, but we, we do set their budgets, mill levies. There's, it's a very broad umbrella that uh, we're charged with um, as being elected officials uh, for the people of this county. Is it fair to say that your concern is with procedure rather than the substance in, of, of particular actions? Yeah, it's, it's all about procedure. If you don't execute a contract properly, if anyone's familiar with this, the contract is null and void. You're, you're on pretty shaky grounds because it wasn't signed by the proper folks that need to sign it. So it, it's a matter of policy and procedure, and it's a matter of public openness. And we can discuss you know, the public meeting laws, if you'd like, about what's going on at the hospital, another source of contention on how they are presently doing their meetings. And they have subcommittee meetings, which are less than the quorum, which is in this case four people of the main body, which is 11. And with that, they say that that's not a public meeting. Yet they conduct business, they take minutes, they vote on, on items within that meeting. And then the outcome of that meeting moves to the main public board meeting. Now, this is where the real issue is. is it goes on what's called a consent agenda. And the consent agenda literally is something that you vote on without even discussing. So you took an item that was discussed in a, in a private meeting, move it to a consent agenda in a public meeting, which the public is un, not informed about what happened, and you get a void of information to the public. To be clear, this is a public entity. They must conduct themselves in a public way. It is always better to go on the side of caution and put everything out you can legally. Now, you can't put everything out, especially if we all understand about privacy issues and HIPAA and violations and other legal actions that, that aren't done in public because it would, quite honestly, it costs you more money or there's people's information at risk. And you can't do that. But barring those type of topics, everything else is in the public. And some of these subjects aren't comfortable to talk about. But we as, me as an elected official, the Board of County Commissioners as a board has always strived to do all of our business in public. Everything that can be done has been done in public. All of the boards that we appoint, I expect no less for them to conduct themselves in public. I don't want to hear about some tricky uh, in interpretation of statutes that someone can think they can get around open meetings laws. The intent is clear to discuss information in public whenever possible and not to avoid it. And I, and I don't feel that's being done. And I think that the public has a right to know of what's going on at their County Memorial Hospital. We, we all need to know more. Keep Get it out of the, uh, the dark closet and bring it in the open and let's talk about it. And earlier you read from a letter from Daniel R. Mosby kind of highlighting some of the statutes that you feel are in violation. and. Clearly, the hospital board disagrees with this. So what can you do moving forward? How does this get resolved? Well, I think the uh, ball's going back and forth between the two courts. We put out a, a, I don't know, for lack of a better word, a demand statement for something to be rectified and uh, past practices to stop and uh, things that were entered into improperly to be done correctly. Uh, that still stands. The letter that we had in response, in my mind, didn't adequately respond to our points. I think those points still stand and they need to be complied with. Now this enters into the part where the Board of County Commissioners has not yet made a decision. I feel though as an individual commissioner that they must be adhered to. As an elected official, I ran for this office to represent you, everybody out there. The ones that didn't vote for me, the ones that voted for me, and maybe the ones that didn't even know about me. I represent this county as an individual and as a, as a Board of County Commissioners. I think that if you folks out there knew what I knew about this and knew the facts, you would expect nothing less from me than to pursue this from my point of view as an individual and, uh, and come to an answer about what these mean and what we're supposed to do. I think statutes are clear. Shall means shall. If I have to do backflips to try to contort the, the uh, statutes into fitting what I want to believe them to mean, then I don't think I'm doing my job. And uh, they're clear. Uh, to date, well, the Board of County Commissioners has uh, you know, agreed to this letter and unanimously. 
and they need to be complied with. I just think that we're, we're getting near the end of this, and uh, we're, we're going to make a decision on which way to go. It hasn't happened yet, so these are one of those issues that are a board decision and not uh, an individual commissioner's decision. Is that letter currently in the hands of the board at the uh, hospital? It is. Uh, they do have the, the letter. I, I can't comment on another document, but there, there is a response. I, I'd say this. There's a response to, the, to their response. And, uh, of course, it's still going back and forth. The hope is, is that they will understand that uh, this is the way it needs to be, and we can move forward and work together. I don't want to probably say more than that this time. The hospital board has sent a response to the letter written by Daniel Air Mosby, and there seems to be some accusations about the role that the county commission is playing or perhaps failing to pay for the hospital. What is the county commission thought on that? This would be a county commissioner thought on that. I can't speak for the commission on this because it hasn't really worked itself through yet. Uh, I'll start uh, on the one that uh, is new to me, and it's about the uh, inmate charges for medical services at the hospital. In the past, we have paid charges uh, for certain inmates. Uh, we're charged with you know keeping them uh, healthy, and it's rather in the past it's re it's ended up to be rather large amounts of money at times that uh, you know that things happen to people. That has been done in the past, so I'm, I'm unaware of what, what we're lacking there with, uh, as, as, as it refers to our sh sheriff. I think that probably just deserves a discussion with the sheriff and a better understanding of that. We've already gone over the Title 25, so I'll, I'll go to the maintenance. Statutes uh, say maintenance. What exactly does that entail? Uh, in my mind, it's maintaining existing equipment. It didn't say replacement, did it? It didn't say replacement of equipment. It says maintenance of equipment. So just what is that? We've in the past budgeted a certain amount of money to cover maintenance. It's, it has not been challenged in the past. And apparently now they're saying that we haven't been paying the maintenance. They came up with some extraordinary number, which has to do with apparently equipment replacement. Well, as we all know, capital replacement equipment and maintenance are not the same thing. So I think we have to be talking apples and apples here, not apples and oranges, to get a better idea of what this is. It's obvious that uh, if the maintenance costs exceed the county's budget, well, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I think we've always tried to do the best we could do for the hospital. Uh, we have uh, paid this maintenance. In the, in the further past, uh, we did not pay maintenance, and we have done that recently, so that's kind of a bonus. Uh, but we're going to have to get to the bottom of exactly what maintenance is. And maybe some of these things that I'm talking about require statutory clarification. Just what did the legislators intend for this to mean? You know, please tell us. We're left to do what? Guess about some things? And, you know, and this is statute sometimes. These particular things that we just talked about are kind of questionable. Why are they the way they are? What, what does that mean? I mean, what is maintenance? I mean, I, from a logical standpoint, I'd say maintenance is uh, maintaining equipment, right? Not replacement. So I think that that's, that's where it is for me. But these items, as I said are, when I started talking about this, have not been discussed by the Board of County Commissioners. Our attorney will review these points of view, and he'll come back with an opinion. And at that point, I'll be more educated about uh, what our attorney thinks of this. And with that, I'll come up with a decision at that time, you know, what direction to take for myself. And then the board will vote and we'll have an answer. I know that's not a decisive going off on a limb uh, point of view, but it's, I think it's a prudent point of view to have and, and to do the right thing for the right reasons. And let's just su stick on the subject at hand, following statutes and, and, and complying with regulations. Our guest on Dateline Wyoming has been Sweetwater County Commissioner John Kolb. This is your host for Dateline, Tom Ellis. We have been joined this morning by Wyo Radio News Director Tracy Perkins. The Board of Trustees of Sweetwater County Memorial Hospital has been invited to provide their position on the issues presented by Commissioner Kolb. This program has been edited for technical quality and time constraints only. The statements included in this interview are produced in their entirety and are a true and factual representation presentation of the comments of Commissioner Cole. You have been listening to Dateline Wyoming, produced in the studios of Wyo Radio. Dateline Wyoming is a weekly news feature highlighting community issues and events that shape our lives here in Southwest Wyoming. 
in-depth analysis and interviews with the people behind the headlines. Presented weekly at this time. Views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of YO Radio ownership, management, or those of our sponsors. Time will be made for responsible dissenting opinion. Join us next Sunday at 7 a.m. for Dateline Wyoming.